Welcome to the May 24th, 2020 Sermon for the Seventh Sunday after Easter at Abiding Word Lutheran Church in Bowling Green, Ohio. I am Pastor Lang, and it is my privilege to share with you this message from God's Word. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The word of God for our consideration is recorded for us in the book of Acts, the first chapter, beginning with the first verse. I wrote my first book, Theophilus, about everything Jesus began doing and teaching until the day he was taken up after he had given instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. And after he had suffered, he presented himself alive to the apostles with many convincing proofs. And he appeared to them over a period of 40 days and told them things about the kingdom of God. Once, when he was eating with them, he commanded them, Do not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for what the Father promised, which you heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. And so when they were together with him, they asked, Lord, is this the time when you are going to restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, It is not for you to know the times or seasons that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And after he said these things, he was taken up while they were watching, and a cloud took him out of their sight. And they were looking intently into the sky as he went away. And suddenly two men in white clothes stood beside them. And they said, Men of Galilee, why are you standing here looking up into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mountain called the Mount of Olives, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. And when they entered the city, they went to the upstairs room where they were staying. Peter and John were there, also James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus, Simon the zealot, and Judas the son of James. All of them kept praying together with one mind along with the women, with Mary, the, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. This is God's word. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, sanctify us by the truth. Your word is truth. Amen. In the name of Christ Jesus, dear fellow redeemed, a blessed, belated Ascension Day to you. Perhaps you didn't even realize this past Thursday was Ascension Day. Ascension Day is celebrated 40 days after Easter, and it commemorates the day that Jesus returned to heaven in triumph after completing his work of saving us from our sins. In several European, European countries, well, Ascension Day is a public holiday with, with post offices and banks and many stores and businesses closed for the day. But in the United States, well, Ascension Day is pretty much forgotten. But even if we don't always remember it, well, Ascension Day remains an important day for us as Christians. And in our reading today, well, Luke shows us why. And so we look to God's word then to, to learn the answer to the question, what does Jesus' ascension mean for us? And we will see, first of all, that it means Jesus is alive. And secondly, it means that we have work to do. And thirdly, well, it means that Jesus is coming again soon. As he had done with his gospel earlier, well, Luke addresses the book of Acts to a man named Theophilus. And in his gospel, Luke wrote about everything Jesus began doing and teaching until the day he was taken up into heaven. And now in his second book, well, Luke starts at Jesus' ascension, and he goes on from there. But before telling about Jesus' ascension, well, Luke provides us with some important background information. He writes, 
After Jesus had suffered, he presented himself alive to the apostles with many convincing proofs. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and told them things about the kingdom of God. You might recall some of Jesus' many appearances after his resurrection. On Easter afternoon, Jesus traveled to Emmaus with two disciples, and, and he explained to them why he had to suffer, die, and rise again. And sometime that same afternoon, well, Jesus also appeared to Peter. And later that evening, Jesus appeared to ten of the apostles in the upper room. Thomas wasn't there. And a week later, Jesus appeared in the upper room again, and, and this time Thomas was there. And one day at daybreak, when Jesus appeared to his disciples as they were fishing on the Sea of Galilee, and Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians that on one occasion Jesus appeared to more than 500 disciples at once. And Jesus also appeared to his brother, James. The purpose of Jesus' many appearances after his resurrection, well, that was to give his disciples what Luke describes as many convincing proofs that he was indeed risen from the dead. In this way, Jesus made sure his disciples were certain of his resurrection. There was no doubt on their part that Jesus was really alive. And during those 40 days after his resurrection, well, Jesus also instructed his disciples and told them things about the kingdom of God. He focused their attention on the results of his death and resurrection, those blessings of the forgiveness of sins and eternal life in heaven. And through the Holy Spirit, while well, the disciples were convinced that the message of the gospel, that Jesus lived, died, and rose again to save us from our sins, that that message is true. And as witnesses of Jesus' resurrection, well, they would testify to the truth of this gospel message to others. So why is this important for us? Well, can you imagine what it would be like if Jesus had not risen from the dead? I mean, what if Jesus had never shown himself to his disciples after suffering, his suffering and death? And what if Jesus never ascended into heaven? Our lives would certainly be different, wouldn't they? Imagine waking up in the morning and the challenges of your daily life make it impossible for you to get out of bed. Where will you turn for strength to face the day? Well, you can't turn to Jesus. He's dead. Or your doctor tells you that you have cancer. Where will you turn for the assurance that, that God will work even this out for your good? And you can't turn to Jesus. He's dead. A loved one dies. Where will you turn for the assurance that you will see your loved one again? You can't turn to Jesus. He's dead. And you think about your own mortality. And you realize that one day you too will die and that you will have to stand before the Almighty, Holy God and, and answer to Him for all that you have done in your life. And you know God has said in His Word that in order to get into heaven that you must be perfect. And yet you look at your life and, and you see that you have, done, you have been nowhere near perfect. Where will you turn for the assurance that all your sins have been forgiven? Where will you turn for the confidence that when you stand before God that he will declare you not guilty and welcome you into heaven? You can't turn to Jesus. He's dead. How hopeless our lives would be if Jesus had never risen from the dead, if he had never shown himself to his disciples, and if he had never ascended into heaven. Well, praise and thank God that Jesus did rise from the dead. And he did show himself to his disciples. He did ascend into heaven. And because Jesus is alive, well, we know that all our sins have been forgiven. We have the certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life. And we are confident that one day soon Jesus will welcome us to heaven. And we are so convinced of this because we know that Jesus really is alive. Hundreds of people saw him alive, and, and not just once, but, but many times over during those 40 days after his resurrection. It is true. Jesus is alive. And that's what his ascension means for us. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Jesus' ascension also means something else for us. It also means that well, we have work to do. 
before Jesus ascended into heaven, he said to his disciples, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Jesus had completed the work he had come to do, and it was now time for him to return to heaven. But that in no way meant that, the, that Jesus' disciples' work was also completed. No, the disciples' work was just beginning. After Jesus' ascension, well, the disciples were to return to Jerusalem and, and wait for the gift of the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit came upon them, well, they would receive power and, and would tell others about Jesus. And they would start in Jerusalem and share with the people of that city the, the good news that Jesus is the Savior. Then they would go farther out to all Judea and Samaria. And from there, they would go to the ends of the earth with the gospel message. And now was the disciples' job to tell every person on the face of the earth about Jesus and, and all that he had done to save all people from their sins. But how were they to do this? They were just 11 men, plus perhaps several hundred others. How could they ever be Jesus' witnesses to the ends of the earth? Well, they would receive help. They would not have to rely on their own strength to carry out this task. Now, Jesus promised them, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Jesus was referring to the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on Pentecost just 10 days after his ascension, which we will celebrate next Sunday. What a tremendous difference that gift of the Holy Spirit made in the disciples. Empowered by the Holy Spirit, well, they were emboldened to proclaim Jesus in spite of fierce opposition. And they were willing to suffer anything, even death, for the sake of Jesus. And wherever they went, well, they were eager to tell others about Jesus. And empowered by the Holy Spirit, well, they were able to do the work that Jesus had given them to do, that work of being his witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Jesus' ascension also means that you and I have work to do. Jesus wants you and me to, to be his witnesses in, in Bowling Green and, and in all Ohio and Michigan and to the ends of the earth. And this might seem quite overwhelming when you first think about it. After all, we're a congregation of about, what, 150 or so people? What, what can we do? We don't have to rely on our own strength to carry out this work. No, Jesus has given us the Holy Spirit. He has given him to us in our baptism. And Jesus continues to give us the Holy Spirit through his word and in the Lord's Supper. And empowered by the Holy Spirit, well, we will be Jesus' witnesses here in Bowling Green and in all Ohio and Michigan and to the ends of the earth. And as we pray for the Holy Spirit to, to work in our hearts and to strengthen our faith and, and to turn us into Christ's bold and confident witnesses, well, let's also remember to pray for the Holy Spirit's guidance in the lives of those who serve as Christ's witnesses throughout the world, our missionaries at, at home and abroad, the pastors and members of the churches of the Confessional Evangelical Lutheran Conference made up of 32 church bodies throughout the world, including our own Evangelical Lutheran Synod, that share a common faith and, and strive to take the gospel to their respective corners of the world. Pray for them. Pray that the Holy Spirit would empower them to be bold proclaimers and faithful witnesses to the people and regions in which they serve. Yes, Jesus' ascension means we have work to do. But there is still one more thing we want to note about what Jesus' ascension means. It means that Jesus is coming back. Forty days after his resurrection, Jesus returned to his heavenly home. And Luke simply describes it this way. After Jesus said these things, he was taken up while they were watching, and a cloud took him out of their sight. Jesus' ascension marked the end of his earthly ministry. He had carried out his Father's plan of salvation to completion. Luke continues, They were looking intently into the sky as he went away, and suddenly two men in white clothes stood beside them. And they said, Men of Galilee, why are you standing here looking up into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. 
The angel's message echoed what Jesus had earlier told his disciples on Maundy Thursday, the night before he was crucified. Jesus said, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to be with me, so that you may also be where I am. Jesus leaving his disciples was not permanent. But one day soon Jesus would return. He would return visibly, just as he had ascended visibly. And when he returned, he would take his disciples to be with him forever in the heavenly mansions he had prepared for them. And one day soon Jesus is also going to return visibly to take you and me to be with him in the heavenly mansions he has prepared for us. Knowing that Jesus is coming soon, well, that gives us a, a sense of urgency to do the work that Jesus has given us to do while we still can. For we don't know how much time we have left before Jesus returns. And so there's no time to waste. Well, every moment of our life is a precious gift from God, an opportunity and, and a privilege to serve him as his witnesses. And as we eagerly anticipate Jesus' return, well, we'll be Jesus' witnesses so that many others too may know and, and believe in Jesus as their Savior, that they too can look forward to Jesus' return in glory on the last day. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, uh, I doubt if anyone who tried to, well, anyone that tries to make Ascension Day a national holiday here in the United States, I, I doubt that they would get very far. But even if they were successful, well, I fear that like Christmas and Easter, well, Ascension Day wouldn't be celebrated as it intended. But as Christians, well, we know that Jesus' Ascension really is worth celebrating. It reminds us that Jesus is alive. And it shows us that we have much work to do. And it reassures us that Jesus is coming again soon. May the comfort and joy of Jesus' ascension fill our hearts and lives as we go out as Jesus' witnesses in Bowling Green and in all Ohio and Michigan and to the ends of the earth. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding Keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. And we pray. Almighty God, merciful Father, our ever-present help in time of trouble, we come to you on behalf of our brothers and sisters in Christ at Holy Scripture Lutheran Church in Midland, Michigan, as they deal with the devastating effects of recent flooding. Once again, O oh Lord, we have come to realize that your thoughts are not our thoughts. Your ways are not our ways. In your wisdom, you have permitted this disastrous flood to cause pain and loss. Do not let the hearts of your people despair, but sustain and comfort them. Be with them now and in the days to come. And Heavenly Father, as our nation pauses to remember those in the military who have given their lives for freedoms we enjoy, we pray you would have us all look to you for strength, comfort, and guidance. Be with all who serve in the armed forces. Bless them and their families. Grant your loving protection. And let peace prevail among all the nations, O God. Especially let your mercy rest upon our land, even as we acknowledge with thanksgiving your past goodness on this country. If it is your will, preserve the lives of the men and women in uniform as they defend our citizenry. And most of all, we pray that you would turn the hearts of all military and civilian, to your holy word, where we find the true peace for our sinful souls that surpasses all understanding. Keep us repentant of sin. Move us to know, take hold of, and treasure your saving grace. In the name of Jesus, our Savior, and your, and your beloved Son, who alone gives this peace and hope for eternity, we pray. Amen. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.